The component wheel loads graph is really similar to the total wheel loads graph. And what it's trying to do is calculate the total vertical load on these, um, each tire. And uh, you can see the four graphs here. Um, they each represent each tire. So we have the front left, front right, rear left, and rear right tires. Um, the main difference between this graph and the total wheel loads graph is um, the total wheel loads graph just shows one signal, right? And it's adding all of the springs, the ARBs, um, dampener forces, and making it all kind of like the sum, right? All of those forces added together. And uh, sometimes it makes a lot of sense to break those forces out and measure them individually. And we do this a lot of the times. Uh, because when we're adding sti lateral stiffness from the springs and the ARBs, um, we, we want to be mindful of how much of the lateral stiffness is coming from the springs and how much is coming from the ARBs. And the reason why is ARBs limit single wheel compression. So, um, for example, um, when you're going over curb, when you have most of your lateral stiffness from the spring, you don't um, load up the outside tire when you hit that curb. But with an ARB, because it's linking the inside and outside tires, if you have a lot of lateral stiffness from the ARB, when you go and hit that curb on the inside tire, it's also going to load up the outside tire. And if that outside tire is already on the limit of grip, that little extra load might unsettle it just enough to break traction. So again, this is a great graph to see how much of the, the load is coming from the springs versus the ARB to kind of just help you make sure that you're not getting too much contribution from one or the other. So if I scroll into this data and you can see um, there's three kind of colors here and they each represent like the spring, the dampener, or the ARB force. You can see here with this ACC data, the blue line, which is the dampeners, are always at the zero axis. And that's because when I look at the car parameters for this game, you can see that the dampening um, forces, we, we don't know them in ACC, so they're left blank. And that's why... The, the line here is um, always at zero. So we're kind of ignoring the, the forces added by the dampeners. So that's why in ACC, you mostly just want to look at this at steady state or kind of at each of these points where the green is leveled, right? Um, but we do have an ARB force and we do have a spring force. So we can measure kind of the steady state forces here. Um, so if I go into, let's look at Stow here. Um, this is Silverstone data set. If I scroll in here um, and look at the loads, um, you can see that on this front left tire, which is the outside front tire, um, we have about 15, um, oh, one second, that's really small, uh, 1500 newtons. And on the ARB, we just have 500 newtons, right? Um, so about 30% of the lateral stiffness is the ARB, um, which is really, really good. You typically don't want to be above 30%. Um, so this means I have a good amount of stiffness coming from the springs and the ARB. It's a good ratio there. Um, if this green line was all the way up here by the red the red line, meaning I'm just generating just as much lateral stiffness from the ARB as I was a spring, um, this probably means I'm not going to be able to handle curves very well. So I might consider lowering um, the ARB force um, so that more of the contribution is coming from the spring. Um, but that's just an example of how you can use this graph. Again, it's measuring the total lateral stiffness. So it can give you an idea if you have like load patch variation or um, kind of what the loads do the tire is. Again, I like to use the handling or the suspension page um, lateral stiffness distribution because we're more interested in the forces and the ratios between the inside and outside tires to measure the load transfer. But how that is on the front axle versus the rear axle, right? That kind of gives us that mechanical balance. And this isn't really going to help us with that. We have that graph um, on another page for a reason. But again, this one helps us identify the contribution from each component. So that's the tutorial, guys. If you have any questions about the component wheel loads, please let us know in the Discord. And we'll try to answer them to the best of our ability. Until then, I hope you guys have a good day. Um, this is Zach from RC, and I'll catch you guys later.